Hello there, I'm Sconculus, and this is Tappin' Deck Tech, where I present to you decks that are fun, strong, or interesting. Today we are playing a deck that controls the early game with loopable damage effects until we set up for massive and potentially oppressive combos. The heart of the deck lies in Waka, who will consistently draw us into our win conditions and power them up to unprecedented levels by repeatedly using his second effect. Waka is enabled by playing a very low action count and with a majority of those actions being draw cards. Each one of our draw cards will activate Waka an additional time with Wild Resistance always drawing a unit to be buffed also. And Ominous Exchange is our best turn one play besides Waka. These three cards are our only way to set up Breakaway outside of the hero art itself, so don't waste them. Speaking of, Breakaway is one last way to trigger Waka, and because of the timing of the hero art, Waka will buff both the unit returned and the unit played. When you can set this up, the value is unmatched. And the other major synergy with Breakaway is the when placed effects of Lilith, Trismagia, and Bar Lagual. These will always activate no matter how the card is played, so Breakaway will allow us to, for example, return Trismagia, dodging its death effect, and to play Bar Lagual for free, making an unrespondable 7 damage play at the low cost of 3 MP. You even have a 1 MP follow up to that for 3 more damage. This deck's late game is unstoppable once you get these loops going. Returning cards can also help us keep Lilith online, but this deck already draws so much in cycles that we usually find a legendary demon pretty quickly. The other monster besides Barlagual that we usually break away for thanks to Wild Resistance is Almadron. They are the best non-legendary for the Waka buffs to go to. Almadron's attacking effect basically means they will always win trades, spill over makes this even stronger, basically letting them control the entire field, and that's a problem just at their base stat line. One of this deck's best win conditions is getting two Almadrons on field at the same time, five seconds off from the other's attack. This is super oppressive and can permanently stun out your opponent. It's also pretty consistent thanks to wild resistance. And just as good as that setup is using the action from Bar Lagual, Agility, to give a single Almadron the same lockdown. This one is a bit harder to set up, but whenever you do, it's basically game over. And it's honestly something that should not exist. Our one enabler for both of our monsters is Master Mounter, which summons either of them for 3 MP, making it the cheapest way to get the strongest breakaway setup possible. Mounter is also due to receive an indirect buff next week, gaining the ability to summon the legendary monster, Absolute Power Tigrex. To make room for Tigrex, I would recommend cutting either Unforeseen Interference or the Intimidating Lady, Right now, Lady is super essential to deal with Storm Owl, but it's terrible to draw into your EX, so I found one to be a lot better, and without Owl to worry about, you might not need it at all. Unforeseen Interference is basically the tech slot, so if there's no room for it with the need to play the Tigrex, that's the card I would cut. Brainwashed is also not the best card to draw to your EX, but this card is so important to beat sure you can, which will be a monster next season that this card cannot be cut. And now, last of all, we have our five devastating legendary units to break with our hero art. The most signature for the deck being the Arch Assassin, which is soon to be slightly nerfed specifically because of Breakaway. Its actual effect is untouched thankfully, so this card will still completely take over the game when it comes online. Even with an empty EX pocket, using Breakaway on this card is busted. Constant low MP board wipes is probably something no color should have. 
But there she is, and she's not going anywhere. Next we have Devil's Successor Virgil, a potential game ender as a 4-9 with Avilogy, who unfortunately we don't really want to break away into unless he gets some buffs. That's because he's only at his strongest when ascended. We also have his not so wacky for once brother, Sin Devil Trigger Dante. One of the most powerful cards in all of Teppin, potentially winning entire matchups the second he's played thanks to his attacking effect. This is so powerful, especially when it hard counters the ever meta change form, that his other effects are entirely a bonus. His unleash makes him even more of a win condition than he already was, and even halves your most expensive card in hand. Other than the arch assassin, this is our strongest effect to loop with breakaway. And finally, we have the iconic and downright spooky towering Lady Dimitrescu. The second she is played, Lady D can kill everything, including your own units, with extraction. One of the most powerful actions in the entire game, especially at only 1 MP, that you can only get using Lady D. I'm pretty sure. No, no, yeah, 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 it's definitely just Lady D. No other card in the game that I know of can search extraction. And after using the action, assuming you hit at least two units, the towering lady becomes truly scary. Getting this buff online and setting up your decimates using the action is the one skillful part of using Lady D, because after you do that, she becomes a relentless, self-sufficient, unstoppable killer, and she only becomes scarier as she kills. If you get absurdly good draws with Waka, you can even have her pop off without using extraction, or you can combine her with the Mystery Merchant Duke to bring her power to levels that really no other card in Teppin can reach. Duke provides an unprecedented plus 6 plus 3 using his Resonate and the Famed Blade, which is definitely strongest on Lady D, but combining him with Almadron or one of our flyers also tends to be game winning. His second explorer won't always be online, since your EX might be full, but if it is clogged with a unit, one of the flashiest plays you can ever make is to use Breakaway on another unit, returning it to the full EX so they go to Grave and play the other unit, making room for the Explorer. It's the sickest, and people typically don't try to contest the Duke when you do it because they don't know the play is possible. Out of all the Explorers, the Feng Shui engine is the only one that's completely broken and by combining it with Lady D, she will become the strongest unit of all time. Here's the deck QR for you, and with all that said, let's get into it. Game one, we are up against Devil Breaker Nero, one of the strongest generic hero arts in the game right now, which has unfortunately been overshadowed by Storm Owl and its synergy with Heart Tank. I think we'll see a lot more of this deck next season, so hopefully we'll see just what makes it so powerful. We'll start off with Waka and follow that up with Ominous Exchange to buff the Lady D we pulled to our hand, and our opponent responds with Disarm to try to stop us, but we can still get the buff using Wild Resistance and letting the card from Ominous go to the graveyard. Our opponent uses White Cat Circus to get their own EX set up, and they will play down Louisa getting them another card, which gives them the potential setup for their inevitable Felicia play. We'll play down Almadron to contest it when it comes down, and they will play Felicia, followed by Chun. We will play down Lady Dimitrescu to contest the board, and we will break away into our Almadron. Our opponent plays down Princess, which fully buffs up their entire board, including Chun, and we will respond to that with Extraction to break Princess's shield, damage Chun-Li, and set us up to destroy the rest of the board. Only Felicia will be able to survive this unless they have a shield, but at this moment we are able to clear just about everything. We do have to deal with their feline before we get them down to 10 HP so that they don't lower our 
Lady D into a destroyable range, but it doesn't look like they'll have the opportunity. They play down a desperate Heisenberg, and Lady D is able to completely overwhelm everything that our opponent plays, and on the next hit, Lady D will take the game, and we will make sure nothing can possibly block her overwhelming strength by using Mystery Merchant Duke and the Fame Blade to bring her to a 12-18. We return a card to her hand. The, our opponent plays one last unit, and they attempt to use White Cat Circus, but it's too late for anything. Lady D takes game one. Game two, we are up against Rakoha Zero the most powerful hero art of two years ago. Maybe a bit outdated, but Zero players will always find a new way to play their favorite robot, so hopefully we'll see exactly that today. We'll start things off with Waka drawing Trismagia to our EX, and our opponent plays down Victor von Gernheim, followed by Duke, which levels up their Victor. They would get two levels, but before it even resonates, we're able to deny Duke with Trismagia and Barlagual. Our opponent does have more Ica to allow them to win the Barlagual trade, but we have an Almadron to trade out with that. Our opponent will play down another Gerdenheim and use their Cruelty to allow it to beat our Trismagia, and it still hasn't leveled up, so it can get even stronger. They will play down a Grigori Stand and use a Rare Find to level both of their units by searching Handgun. We'll play Ominous Exchange, and our opponent uses Famed Blade to make their Grigori into a 5-11, which will probably defeat our Almadron, so we will use Brainwash to steal it before it can. Our opponent does have Handgun, which will bring our unit down to 2-2, which makes it the perfect target for Breakaway into Almadron, which will leave them with no units on the field. Unfortunately, they do have Brainwash, but we have more than enough tools at our disposal to deal with it. Unfortunately, they can use Rakoha to deal with our huge Grigori that we stole, but we are still left with our Waka. We will play down Almadron, a pretty expensive way to deal with the other Barlagual, and our opponent will use their Grigori stand to potentially block our Waka, but we can play down another Trismagia with our breakaway ready. Once again, we are able to use that to get an additional buff on all of our units, and when we play them all down, our opponent realizes just how far behind they are, and we take game two. Game three, we are up against Ryu Metsshoryuken, a deck that's guaranteed to be a monster next season. So hopefully, through this game, we'll show that we have what it takes to compete in the next meta. We start things off with Waka in our opening hand, but because of all the tools that Red has to deny our Waka buffs, we have to play Ominous Exchange the second we play down our Waka. We do just that, and our opponent still has a Dual Dragon Hado to do heavy damage. They'll play down Hinoa, followed by Barawasha, and we have Brainwash ready to block their Hinoa, and they will stop us from getting the steal using Discord. They play down a Princess Yuki, potentially cycling to find some more spirits, and they will use their hero art on their Barawasha, putting some serious pressure on us. We will play down the Barla Girl, and we are very lucky getting the 50-50 going to the top lane, and they use Hinoa to do a bit of damage to Barla Girl, but it will heal back when we destroy Barawasha. They play down their third Yuki, clearing our board, and bringing us down to 9 HP. Thankfully, we have our hero art ready, and we can use Trismagia to break away into a 4-8 Virgil, and his agility should hopefully put some serious pressure on our opponent. They play down a Baza, ascending for Samanosuke, destroying our Trismagia, but before they shore Yukin, we are able to use another Trismagia, giving us the time to charge for Barlagual, and when we use Wild Resistance, our opponent will see no hope, and we take Game 3. Here we are again, and who do I love when there's a deck that I can only call a combo deck. The payoffs in this deck are crazy. It's somewhat difficult to play though, getting your perfect breakaway set up, but it is so worth it when you get those plays just right. The deck is super flashy, so it's totally worth suffering through a bit of RNG with Waka. As far as matchups go, Red we surprisingly play a pretty similar strategy to with all of our on-play damage, so it ends up being pretty even, 
depending on who can win all those exchanges with the damage. Green is definitely pretty difficult since they can out heal and shield all our damage effects, but if we get past that stage of the game, resets and seals aren't quite as good at beating us because we have breakaway to convert the value into another unit. That's also a strength against red. Other purple decks, we are able to completely outvalue them. And as for Black, Raging Demon is pretty tough since they can usually get a 2 for 1 with our mix of high and low MP units. And if we go for a huge setup on a big Waka buffed unit, they probably have a Titanic to completely wipe all our progress. If you can avoid those two things, then Black is pretty doable though. I've also got a budget version here for you, which swaps out the Epic Demons for some other when placed effects, and Wild Resistance is easy to replace with Foresight, we are still playing the Monsters and Wakas for the big payoffs, and we're able to replace all of our big legendaries with a different payoff in the form of the Wind, which has agility to take advantage of all the buffs. Chameleos is also another very good way to activate Waka. I would recommend the deck to anybody who wants a high skill, high impact combo deck. As for the next episode, we're probably going to take a look at either some Tenkuha with the new supplemental purple card, or some unlimited two color feline spirits. Let me know down below which one you guys would rather see. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you like the video, subscribe if you subscribed. Once again, I'm Sconchulus, and I'll see you in the next one.